gene editing is really just a broad category of being able to go into a genome of, of the cell of, from any species, including humans, and being able to either knock a gene out, put in, introduce, introduce a mutation that you want to assess the function of it. And it's really, the CRISPR is really a revolution because it has actually finally made it really feasible to be able to do these. So what used to be sort of delegated to lower species and model organisms, where people could do really powerful science to discover new functions of genes, um, is now we're able to do that in human cells directly. So imagine, you know, being tasked with figuring out how a car works, but you can only stand back and look at the car. So you can describe it, it's red, it has, you know, an engine that's shiny, it has four wheels, but you can't functionally test what is the job of the engine or what are those wheels doing and what happens to the car if the carburetor is not working or if you have a flat tire. And so that's kind of where science in the human realm was. And so now with CRISPR and gene editing, you can really go into your cell, into your model, and you can say, this is my favorite gene. It's been implicated in diabetes or in cancer. And now you can go in and you can mutate it or knock it out and see the functional consequences of that on the cell behavior. And so it's a very powerful technique. So here at the University of Maryland, um, we have a number of researchers who have already actively engaged in CRISPR gene editing. And so everyone sort of starts at the simplest level and that's making knockouts. So everyone is already invested in studying a process. They have a number of candidate genes they're very interested in. They've probably already done studies with like overexpressing those genes and now they can come in and knock them out and make sure the genes that they're interested in play a role in the processes they're studying and then also look for the interactions. So genes never work alone. They work together in pathways and complexes. And so you can now, instead of just making one knockout, you can make two, you can see who needs a certain partner to work together, who's upstream or downstream functionally. And so you can really start to dissect the processes that are driving the cellular aspects and functions you're interested in.